All right, uh, one of the last uses for confidence intervals is for the confidence interval for the slope of a regression line. So I know you're probably like, wow, well, we got to go all the way back to the slope of a regression line. And um, yeah, we do have to go all the way back to the slope of a regression line. But what I'm about to teach you is actually really, really easy, and a lot of the work is actually already done for you. So let me just explain. Now remember when we're dealing with regression lines, we have um, a list of uh, X data and a list of Y data, right? We got a bunch of data here and a bunch of data here. And we're trying to find a slope of the regression line. And remember the slope explains, how does X explain Y? So remember that we have um, the slope of regression line. We call that B1. So we had the B1 and it was a value, right? It was a number. And... Um, we told you guys to put it over 1, so we said for every 1x, the y increases or decreases by your value of your slope. Now, and remember that the entire formula for this was uh, y hat equals uh, the uh, a plus bx, right, where um, a was the y-intercept and b was the slope. And again, we're dealing with b, the slope. Now, <coughs> One thing to understand here is this slope was calculated from your data. So if Sammy comes in and she decides to um, calculate a slope from her data, she might get a different slope. She might get a different B1. And then if Johnny comes in and calculates a slope from his data, he might get a different slope. And if um, Doug comes in and calculates a slope from his data, he might get a different slope for his data. So um, B1, the slope, is something that could vary. And we want to try to find the true slope. So first off, the true slope is, again, a fixed parameter. And it is... Um, used as the Greek letter beta. Beta is the true slope. And we're trying to estimate what the true slope could be. So we want to find a confidence interval for that true slope. And again, that confidence interval is all going to be based on our slope that we got. It's actually really, really simple. So um, the first thing we do is we start off with our slope, just like we would with a proportion or a mean. And we add or we subtract a margin of error. And that margin of error is a T star kind of like with means, times a standard error of that slope. Now, this standard error formula right here is actually pretty complicated. It uses the standard deviation of the residuals. It uses a whole bunch of stuff. And it's actually, like I said, fairly complicated. But the good news is it's always given to you. You don't have to even know what the formula is for that. I'm going to prove to you that that is given to you in a second. Now, the other thing is the uh, T star here. Now, um, T star is um, based on degrees of freedom, and you have your T-chart or you have your calculator. So remember, the degrees of freedom here is your sample size minus 2. So the degrees of freedom when you're working with slope is your sample size minus 2. And the reason for that is, is that you have two variables. You have X and Y. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in an exact example. But because I have two variables, X and Y, I have to do N minus 2 for my degrees of freedom. A little bit weird, but it's, um, you know, it doesn't make it that difficult. And then you could use invert T on your calculator, find your T star based on your level of confidence, or you could actually use the T chart as well. So um, hopefully that's pretty simple. There are a couple conditions attached. The first condition in order to do this is the scatter plot of your data. Scatter plot of data um, must be straight. Must be somewhat straight. And we've talked about that somewhat straight condition before. Um, Remember, your data should always look straight if you're going to use a linear model to represent it. And remember this too as well, the residual plot shows no pattern. The residual plot shows no pattern. We've talked about that in the past as well. So make sure that's one of your conditions you got to check. And um, third condition is the uh, data must fit normal model, which means it's got to be assumed to be normal, right? The data fit normal model. And there's one more condition, and that's the independence condition, and that is your um, samples must be independent of each other. So um, the sample's got to be independent. And that, that's kind of a typical condition that we've learned in the past. So my whole point is don't let this scare you. These are oftentimes just multiple choice questions, and they are very, very simple. All you need is a, sl a slope, plus or minus T star, times your standard error of your slope. I'm about to show you how all of that is given to you that you need. So here's an example right here. Don't know if you guys remember this one. 
but we did this one in class, and this dealt with 30 sandwiches from Burger King. So 30 sandwiches from Burger King, and we looked at the uh, fat content of the sandwich versus the protein content. And we want to determine, could protein predict fat? So let's, you know, let's, let's have a quick memory here. Next to the word constant is your y-intercept. So the next to the word constant here, this is the y-intercept for your formula, which um, is needed, right? Underneath this number, right here, I'll underline it a different color here. Underneath this is the x variable, and there's your slope right there. So my slope is 0.971381. I'm going to round that just for sake of the problem to 0.97. Okay, that is the slope. Again, right next to the word protein is the slope. So what we have here is our formula is that um, fat predicted is equal to 6.83077. Uh, plus 0.97, I'm just going to use 0.97 for the problem to be a little bit general here, times protein. So if I take the protein in a sandwich, I times it by 0.97 and um, add the 6.83077 and I'll get how much predicted fat the sandwich is supposed to have. So again, you have to understand that if um, I did a different 30 sandwiches, another sample of 30 sandwiches, I might get a different slope. Or if somebody else came in and did a different sample of 30 sandwiches, they might get a different slope. So we're trying to find out what the true slope is. We found the slope to be 0.97, but what is the true slope? So here we go. The confidence interval will be 0.97, plus or minus. Okay. couple things. First thing, I need a T star. Well, remember, I had 30 sandwiches. 30 minus 2 gives me 28 degrees of freedom. 28 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. And let's say that we're trying to find a 95% confident interval. It's a pretty typical interval. So I'm going to do an invert T on my calculator of 0.025, 28 degrees of freedom. And I get a T star of 2.048. Now, if you have to use a T chart and you don't have 28 degrees of freedom, go to the closest number, which I believe would be 30 degrees of freedom. Now, I'm going to look at a T-chart here real quick. And um, on the T-chart, there is a 28 degrees of freedom. So if you look on a T-chart, 28 degrees of freedom, it is 2.048 as well. But if it's a number not on the um, chart, you'd have to find the closest value. Now, the only other thing I need is my standard error. And what do you know? Look right next to slope. It says standard error right here, right? See it? Standard error. And right there is the standard error of your slope. It's literally right next to your slope. I mean, you can't get it wrong. It's right next to the slope. Don't look at the y-intercept. This is slope right next to it. So it'd be the point one two oh nine, Guys, and that's it. I mean, look, everything you have is right here. Slope, standard error. The only thing you have to look up is your t-chart. To find your T star, and that's based off of sample size minus two. It's that simple. So it'd be 0.97 minus 2.048 times 0.1209. So I get that my slope could be as low as 0 0.7224 to as high as, let me just change that to a plus sign, as high as 1.2176. 1 1.2176. So remember, slope is. Um, 0.97 over 1 that says for every 1 gram of protein, the predicted fat goes up by 0.97 grams. So this could vary. It could be as low as for every 1 gram of protein, the fat goes up by 0.72. Or it could be as high as for every 1 gram of protein, the fat goes up by 1.22 grams of fat. So anyway, that is how simple it is to find this value. So let me do another quick example here. I just want you to realize how easy this is. Sorry, this uh, um, is going to get cut off a little bit here, but I'll read it. Basically, we're trying to um, use... Um, try to predict the weight of an alligator based on their length. Okay, so again, right here, first thing I gotta do is find that slope. Look right here, next to constant is the y-intercept. Don't need that. I mean, I need that for the equation, but not for what I'm trying to do in terms of finding a, let's do a 99% confidence interval for slope. We never do confidence intervals for y-intercepts. It's always for the slope. So we do a 5.9 plus or minus a t-star is, let's see here, 
Um, did it say how many alligators I had? Oh boy, I think this problem didn't say it. I think this problem was based on 15 alligators. So that would be 13 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to do an invert norm, or an invert T, excuse me, invert T, 0.005 for the half a percent <coughs> on the tail there for 99% confidence, comma, 13 degrees of freedom, because there are 15 alligators in this um, sample here. So that gives me a T star of 3.0123. So I'll use three decimals because that's what our chart goes with. 3.012. 3.012 times your standard error. Now look at this, guys. Come on. The standard error is literally right next to the slope. So 0.5448. And remember, that standard error says that, hey, my slope is going to be different than Lexi's slope. It's going to be different than Paul's slope. It's going to be different than Ben's slope. It's going to be different than Lindsay's slope. It's going to be different than Kyle's or Brett's slopes. But if you have all those slopes are going to vary, they're going to vary by 0.5448. And um, multiply that by your T star. So again, 5.9 minus 3.012 times 0.5448. And the bottom, the, the smallest the slope could be, with 99% confidence, is 4.26. And um, let me go upwards now. The highest the slope could be, with 99% confidence, is 7.54. So remember, what does slope mean in this problem? Well, this 5.9 over 1, uh, that's the x, that's the y. The x is the length. And how do I know that? Because it's right next to the word slope. This is always the x right here. And that means for every, and the y would be the weight. So for every one inch of length, the weight increases by 5.9 pounds. Could be as high as for every one inch of length, goes up by 7.54 pounds, or could be as low as every one inch, up by 4.26. So very, very easy. So um, I'm going to give you guys this one. How about you pause the video real quick and try it on your own. John believes that he has increased his walking speed. His pulse rate will increase. Um, if you look at the data, this is from um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pieces of data. So your sample size was 7 pieces of data. You can see it in the scatter plot there. Um, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video right now and try to see if you can calculate on your own. I'm going to continue. So whenever you're ready, just hit play again. All right, so we have our slope is right here next to speed right there. So my slope is 16.2809 plus or minus, let's see here, I need a T star for 5 degrees of freedom, T star for 5 degrees of freedom, so I'm going to invert T, uh, let's do a 95% confidence, sorry, 95% confident level, um, so that's going to be 0 0.025, that's going to be the tail probability, comma, 5 degrees of freedom, and I get 2.571, 2.571, times my standard error, look at this, standard error right next to the slope, 0.8192, I mean the only way you can go wrong is if you accidentally use these y-intercept numbers. So 16.2809 minus 2.571 times 0.8192, that gives me the low end, the slope could be as low as 14.17, and <clears throat> could be as high as 18.39. So um, we know for sure that John's um, heart rate will increase, right? It, our, our slope showed that for every one mile per hour speed increase, his heart rate increases by 16.28 um, beats per minute. But it could be as low as increase of 14.17 beats per minute or as high as an increase of 18.39 beats per minute. But one thing I do know is that it will increase um, his heart rate because there's no zero in here, which would show um, basically... <laughs> you know, no difference. So anyway, very, very easy. Hopefully you guys understood that. Very, very easy. Um, sometimes you can't check your conditions if you don't have the residual plot, but you just have to assume the residual plot would be showing nothing, um, no pattern. So anyway, hopefully that's pretty easy. Should be pretty simple. We'll be able to do some questions based on that.